Yo, welcome back everybody, episode 11. We're back with a guest this week, hyped up for this one, uh, Marcus Howard. Super dope conversation we have with him. I uh, wanted to do a quick wrap up of kind of what we posted this week and just what was going on on the, on the Instagram this week. Um, we saw Brandon Jennings go out and get the Virgil Abloh uh, tribute piece, RIP to Virgil. I think that piece was sick. If you haven't seen that post, go check that out. Um, Brandon, someone that got into the fashion industry, uh, mainly influenced by Virgil, and and he kind of had a whole post about it and, and what he meant to him. And I think him getting that tattoo was super cool. Uh, I also posted some high school tattoos. We saw a pic of uh, Amari Bailey and Bronny, and Amari has his little uh, Juice World kind of tribute tattoo on his on his bicep, which is super dope. And then I also reposted a classic pic of Dwight Howard's entire torso slash chest piece that he has, which is like super, super crazy. Um, and you guys went crazy in that post. That post is doing really well. So good shit on that. Um, so this week we are back with a guest, Marcus Howard. We spoke to him, guard on the Denver Nuggets. He was an absolute dog at Marquette. Uh, he had a bunch of cool ass stories for his tattoos. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode the same way I did. Sit back, relax, and enjoy episode 11. What's up, guys? This is your host, Matt Mangano. Make sure to follow, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. And we also have a YouTube channel, so head over to YouTube and hit that subscribe button. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Inked NBA Podcast. We're joined today by Marquette legend, Marcus Howard. What's going on, bro? What's going on, man? Appreciate you having me on. Of course. So you're in New York right now, you know, playing the Knicks. Uh, you're a Jersey guy. Let's just jump into that real quick. Just uh, like growing up in Jersey and, and being back right now in New York, when you're coming into New York and playing games here, how like dope is that for you? No, it's dope, man. I mean, for sure. Um, I didn't spend too much time in Jersey. You know, I was born in Jersey, but uh, my family's, you know, from there, my brothers, my mom, um, you know, so have have ties out here for sure. But, um, you know, it's always it's always good to come back. And, you know, just to be able to see different places, you know, I was around growing up. So um, it, it's, it's really cool being back for sure. So, all right. So you talk about your brothers. And this is one thing when I was like doing my research and shit, I was I was seeing. So you got your two older brothers. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't I don't think either of them have tattoos. Right. Am I right on that? Uh, yeah, I'm the only one, you know, I mean, I'm the youngest of three boys, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, I was always I was always kind of the rebel rebel child. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm the only one with tattoos, you know, uh, my, my dad wasn't really big on us on tattoos or earrings or anything. And I got both uh, when I was in college. So, um, you know, I, I definitely kind of just branched out a little bit and, mm -hmm. you know, was a little bit of a rebel and in, in doing that. But yeah, my brothers don't have any tattoos. So what was the, what was the reaction when you came home with your first piece? How was, how was your parents Man. feeling about that? <laughs> so the thing was, I was talking to my mom about it and, you know, my mom was all for it. She liked the idea. Um, and I think that's what made my dad even more mad when he found out. But when my dad found when my dad found out, he didn't talk to me for like a week. <laughs> he was so he was so mad. So, um, you know, over time, you know, he's come to like you know like like my tattoos, especially because they're all meaningful. They all have mm -hmm. a you know specific meaning to me, and the values that I you know hold and grew up with. So, um, but yeah, at first it wasn't it wasn't too popular with my dad. You know, he was super pissed about it. Yeah. What was the what was your first piece? What was the first tattoo you got? So I have a have it on my wrist. It's right here. It's uh, my favorite Bible verse. It's Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ. And that's just a verse that, you know, has been in my family, you know, from the time I was little growing up and something that was preached from my dad and my mom, you know, from the time I was little. So that was the first one that I got. I got that my freshman year of college. So I was about 17. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember like going with a couple of my teammates because they were touching up some of their stuff. And I went. And they were like, you know, you're going to get your first one and you get your first one. You're going to be hooked and you're going to you're going to want more. And I was like, nah, like, oh, I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool with just getting this one. Yeah. Um, and this one only took like 10 minutes. You know, it's it's um, what is it? it's five, six words and it took about mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes um, and it's held for about four or five years now. So. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, that was my first piece. And that was the one I was like, you know, kind of got everything started for me. Well, how quick, like you say, uh, like the addiction of kind of tattoos, how quick did you go back <laughs> in the shop after that one? I mean, I was probably back. I mean, so was my freshman year. Honestly, I didn't go back probably till the end of my freshman year. And that's when I got, okay. you know, um, on my right arm, I have my middle brother, Jordan. He's real creative and real artistic. And he made kind of like 
because me and my brothers are so close as a lot of people that know me know and he made um kind of like a crest for us three with howard mm -hmm. being our last name it's a big h and then a three in the middle just because us three brothers um so i got like our h3 um symbol and then i got both their names desmond's above and jordan's below um you know just just showing my appreciation to them and just the influence that they've had on my life and so that was my second piece i got like towards the end of my freshman year and then from then on man i just i got i went from wrist to other wrist to a mouse went I, I just wanted to get a full sleeve so um yeah it picked up quick after that you know like my junior year was when i think i really did most of my work and then you know when i say once i got out of college you know i kind of went crazy on my whole left arm so, so yeah. yeah well that's something too i noticed when i was looking at your your tattoos is this sort of like a like a Nick Young kind of thing where it's like keeping one arm right now strictly for buckets and one arm is kind of like the tattoo arm? Oh, man, you know, I, I definitely um, spent a lot of time on my left arm. Um, I do. Mm -hmm. I do have my, my only tattoo I have on my right arm is the one with my brother's names and our, our symbol. But um, I'm planning on actually getting my whole other arm done. I'm planning to do that, you know, once the season's over here okay, in, um, in April or later. So now I'm planning to go. I'm planning to get my other arm done. But. Nah, nothing like that. I know Nick Young was big with just, you know, strictly for buckets, yeah, yeah. his right arm. But, but nah, I mean, that's a pretty bold statement. You know, I'm a pretty, uh, I just keep it light with it, you know. So, I mean, for me, it's all about just, you know, finding space and, you know, being creative as I can with, you know, what I love and what I value and being able to put on my body as an expression of, you know, my kind of art. I'm not artistic like that. So I have a big, big respect and, you know, admiration for, you know, artists that are able to tattoo such great pieces and put them bring you know a story or bring an instance and bring it to life on your body so i think that's super dope for sure that's very well said too because i feel like i'm the same way with stuff like that where myself i'm not too artistic but like i i can yeah. appreciate how they like put the, the time in and how they're able to do certain things that's for sure so for you uh like because i know you also have a jeremiah bible verse right on that's the shoulder yep. piece yeah so Talk to me about that and just about how religion has played like a role in you and just like shaping you as to who you are today. For sure. I mean, my faith is, you know, the most important aspect of my life. And that's just something I grew up on and my family kind of instilled in me. And, um, you know, for me, I mean, the things I was going to put on my body were definitely very meaningful to me. And my, my faith is definitely at the forefront of that. So majority of what I have has to do with, you know, uh, certain things in the Bible that really stick out to me and verses that really mean a lot to me. And Jeremiah 29, 11 is one that's big. Um, just because I feel like we live in a world and a society where you feel like you have to have everything figured out and, you know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I just know that with my faith and how I believe in it, um, that verse sticks out just because, you know, um, I know who I serve and I know no matter what I do, um, the plan he has for me is is set out. And so all I have to do is, you know, follow each and every day the things I know how to do right from wrong and um, he's going to point me in the right path so for me that was big and you know that's kind of one of the bigger pieces on on my on my, on my arm um, mm -hmm. you know just because of how much that, that verse means to me so um, so yeah that's definitely probably one of my favorite ones for sure yeah no that's awesome um, so for you walk me through like when you go and you you were kind of deciding it for a tattoo or you're going to get a tattoo you know what's what's your whole process like like how do you find your artist that you're going to how do you find the the this you know font or the scripture stuff like that just walk me through the whole process yeah so actually um in terms of like finding what i want or you know working with the artist um i'm a firm believer i don't like going to you know many different people um mm -hmm. you know i've only actually all my tattoos i have right now one person's done um oh, that's so dope. when i was in college yeah dope. when i was in college um i got connected with this guy named jeremy and um, he's done all my pieces and, you know, we've done, we've sat down for hours and hours and it's actually cool because me and him have developed a really good relationship. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. You know, he's been, you know, tattooing me and everything, you know, we talked about life and just stuff like that. So I feel our relationship goes beyond, you know, him just being my tattoo artist and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, it's kind of tough with how much I travel to, you know, be able to sit down and, you know, have a strict guy I go to right now. So um, I'm mm -hmm. kind of in between artists right now, but I'm planning, you know, for my my next sleeve to kind of work with a guy in Denver His name is Brian. Um, someone within our organization referred me to him. And um, for me, it's just really um, I, I love getting to sit down and talk with the person and see kind of the vision they have with what I have to bring to them. But at the same time, I like looking at the work and seeing what they've done. And if I could kind of, you know, use what they've done as, you know, kind of a base and kind of try and, you know, make my, put my own little twist on it. Um, just to be, just to know that they've done something similar, I think is really cool, mm -hmm. but at the same time, make it my own. 
Um, so this guy I'm working with, Brian, um, you know, he's he has a lot of great ideas for what I'm planning to do next and stuff like that. So um, for me, it's definitely a it's it's a, it's a process. And then like font wise, all the font I actually have on me, um, like this, the the curse of that this verse is on. I actually wrote this myself. So this is my this is oh, my wow. handwriting. Yeah. So that's my handwriting. And then, you know, different stuff like that. You know, I want to have like my own own piece in it, too. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff that's written or or like the words or stuff that, you know, I, I did just freehand. That's sick. I don't think I, you're the first guy that at least we've spoke to that that has done something like that. That's really dope. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, I mean, I, I can write like in school. I was really good at, drawing, at writing in cursive. So that like, anytime yeah. I have any type of font, I like to do cursive. So that's that's something that's just just sticks with me. That's super dope. So you talk about the the like relationship with you and the artist. Um, and you didn't you didn't know the guy before you like went for a tattoo, right? Yeah, no, I didn't know. Yeah, and then so just talk to me about that too, and and how kind of the relationship built, and then just how tattoos in general kind of because I know you you were saying you got referred to now with someone in the in the organization and your team. Yeah. You know, you have we we talked to Austin uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago who has some crazy fucking like tattoos yeah, and then crazy a bunch people. of your teammates are tatted up. Yeah. So talk to sure. me about that. Do you guys ever like kind of talk in a locker room, talk about tattoos and, and just shit like that? Oh, definitely. I mean, just, with, just it being such a, you know, a big culture piece nowadays is, you know, mm -hmm. art being expressed through the game and through players, you know, um, you know, Austin's one of those guys, man, that's, you know, his piece is one of the best in the league for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like we, we sit around and talk about it a lot, you know, and, even before hopping on with y'all, I mean, I was asking him about how, how it was. And, you know, he, he just started, you know, talking to me more about his tattoos and kind of the process mm -hmm. that went into it with him. So it's super cool to kind of get just different people's stories and different and different guys as, you know, experiences, um, you know, but for me, yeah, the guy I've worked with, you know, my barber in Milwaukee actually put me on to him. And, um, you know, when you sit with, some, with somebody for so long and they're working on you and, you know, they kind of seen you at some, some areas, they see you in a vulnerable yeah, spot, yeah. just like yeah. if, if you're in pain or something. So for them to be able to sit through that and you actually just talk to them about, you know, experiences they've had, you know, tattooing for as long as they've had and stuff like that. It's cool. And like I mentioned before, man, like I just really have um, an immense respect for, you know, people who are artistic like that and that can create. So, um, you know, it's I, I'm always interested just to see, you know, how those people think and how they go about their business and about their job. And, the grind of it is a, very similar to, you know, us, us guys in the league, man, you know, they have to do a lot of things on their own, have to figure it out. And um, they kind of have to, you know, be their own, own, own type of own type of person. So um, I, I find a lot of similarities, you know, with, with guys that play ball and then also guys that tattoo, you know, because the grind, the grind is the same for real. So um, it's, it's super cool to kind of see that just that different aspect of it. For sure. No, that's, that's, I agree. I think that those guys, like there's, I have so much respect for dudes that, cause it's, it's, again, it's going out, and you're doing your own thing. You gotta, you gotta, you know, make a name for yourself out in the tattoo game. There's millions of artists, so you know it's it's that select few, just like in a league where it's like you gotta push to make it. No, for sure. So talk to me about. Uh, I know you have now the Twin Towers, and you also have the Puerto Rican flag tattooed on you. What are kind of the the meanings and the, the just the the like? Why'd you get those two? Talk to me about those. Yeah, so I mean, the Puerto Rican flag I'll kind of get into first, you know, I mean, um, so my ethnicity, I'm half African American and half Puerto Rican on my mom's side. Um, mm -hmm. My mom's Puerto Rican, she's from Jersey. Um, you know, so I mean, that that being a part of who I am is definitely something that means a lot to me. Um, I take great pride in, you know, who I am and, you know, what I represent. Um, I represent the United States and all, and all I do also. But um, being Puerto Rican, I'm extremely proud to be Puerto Rican, especially playing the game of basketball at this level. Um, not many of us uh, that are Puerto Rican, you know, get that opportunity. But, um, for me, I'm extremely proud to be Puerto Rican and, um, you know, be among a lot of great, you know, basketball players that are Puerto Rican. So, um, for that to be on my body, man, it, that's just like kind of a tribute, you know, to my culture as well as, you know, my mom and, um, all my family that, you know, are from that side. And mm -hmm. then, oh yeah. Then the, uh, the twin towers, you know, that one actually, I, to me, that is my most meaningful tattoo I have um you know being being born in jersey and you know my, mm -hmm. my dad lived in jersey for 20 years he's from indiana but he lived in jersey for 20 years my mom was born and raised there um my family my my immediate family we lived there for a number of years um you know but my dad he had a job um that i mean where we lived in jersey is probably about 30 minutes from new york but my dad's office okay. was in new york city and mm -hmm. 
Um, he would always take the Lincoln Tunnel to get to his office. And he had a corporate office in the Twin Towers in the World Trade Center. And um, I'll never forget, you know, hearing my dad speak for the first time about his faith and about why he truly believes God is real and the impact he's had on his life. Um, my dad was actually supposed to be in the Twin Towers um, when 9-11 oh, wow. happened. And he was supposed to be, um, you know, going there for a meeting. But, you know, a couple of days before he had the meeting on September 11th at about 9 a.m. before a couple of days before they called him and said they had to move the meeting to a different date. And, wow. you know, and yeah, so I'll never forget, like being being two, three years old. And, you know, my parents like, you know, like in, in the living room, like embracing and crying and um, hearing my dad speak on this, like and truly like saying, like, you know, I know God's real because um me and my brothers could be without a father and you know for me yeah. my dad is my biggest influence in my life so um to go through life with not, without having a dad especially the dad I have um I wouldn't be where I'm at you know so those twin towers of course is representation of you know all the lives lost um mm -hmm. during that time and the tragic you know incident in our country but at the same time it's always a representation and um always gives me remembrance of you know just who my dad is and and how much he means to me and you know that that time period where he could not have been in my life so that for me is the most meaningful one for sure and i remember when my, yeah, showing no, my that, dad that he was super yeah. emotional so um yeah that one that one always you know is very close to my heart yeah wow that's insane that that whole story is nuts and i appreciate you like opening up like that and talking about it yo 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 everyone from nyc i need you to listen up you got to go check out my guys at First Class NYC in Manhattan over on Canal Street. You don't want to be walking around with a lousy tattoo and getting flamed by your friends. So if you're in New York and you're looking for some dope artists and a dope shop to head to, make sure you guys check out on Instagram at First Class NYC. They got a bunch of dope artists, do all different kind of designs so they can do anything you're looking for. Make sure to hit them up, book your appointment and get some fresh tattoos. For sure. So uh, going back into like when you said you show your dad that piece or just any pieces you've showed your parents uh, without like your brothers having tattoos with your parents not really being into it. What was like your your influence? Like what made you want to go and get tattooed like when you first did? I mean, honestly, I like growing up, I was always kind of different. And like I always felt I kind of stood out and did just different things in terms of me personally. I was always doing crazy stuff with my hair growing up or, yeah, yeah. you know, just acting out or being wild or whatever. So. I just always felt like, you know, I was going to end up doing something like that. But at the same time, like I had influences like Alan Iverson, like yeah. growing up as, as, you know, a basketball player, he was my favorite player, you know, being a smaller, mm -hmm. smaller guard and, you know, seeing the impact Alan Iverson had on the game, but also, you know, just pop culture in general. And, um, you know, the tattoos he had, his style, his swag, um, you know, that's something I looked up to for sure. And, you know, I think he's definitely an influence for a lot of hoopers out there that, you know, or just trying to find their way. So for me, um, that was really was a big influence for me was um, Allen Iverson, but also too just, you know, the culture shift with the NBA and just, just basketball in general. You know, I mean, I think um, for me, I was always one to be expressive and things I enjoyed and things that meant a lot to me, but I can never really put like a pen to a paper and just draw or something like that. So for me, yeah. this is kind of, this is my expression of art is, you know, being able to put things on my body that I'm comfortable with that, you know, mean a lot to me. For sure. That's very well said. Um, and I agree. I think like when we talked to, we talked to, so this is like a similar quote you just said is, is when we talked to Willie Cauley Stein, he said something like that, where it was like, you know, what's on my body is kind of just art and, um, and, and it's a way of me expressing myself. Cause, and he said, you know, he's not a very like vocal guy or not a very loud guy where it comes to where he'd rather just show it on his body and kind of like show what he's into things that he likes through it, through the art on his body. So that's like super yeah. dope. Makes a lot of sense for sure. So what what was your longest session like? You talk about sitting down with your artist for like hours and hours. What's your longest session? Yeah. Uh my longest session, and I still haven't even I still haven't even gotten it done or touched up the inside of my arm just because of how much it was hurting me at the time. Yeah. Um uh, the amount of like times I had to like, you know, take a rest or take a break. Man, it took probably eight hours. I mean, to get inside of my arm in the back just eight hours yeah. of getting blasted with it i mean man it was i mean I, like like the whole front side of my arm i was like there were times when i was sleeping through it because like i just got so used to the to the feeling but the inside yeah. of my arm like close to my armpit and like the back right here yeah man, 
man, like I was like so locked in and like I was sweating. <laughs> I was like, oh man, every time he was getting ready to go, like, I would get so nervous, man. Like I had to try and get my mind on something different. But yeah, that was honestly like, it was a long session, but at the same time, it was just like, I was so ready for it to be done. I think that's why it felt longer too. Just cause like, yeah. man, I was just like, let's just get this out the way. And I still have, I've gotten a lot of other stuff touched up and everything, but this I have yet to touch. And I don't know if I'm going yeah. to just cause man, that, that feeling like, I remember driving home after the session. I was like, I have to come back and do this again. I don't know if I can do it. And so, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, you know, every person that's gotten tattooed in that area kind of knows that feeling. So, um, so yeah. Do you, so, so when you're getting a tattoo, what you're like, are you chilling on your phone? You got headphones on. What are you kind of doing to distract yourself? I, I mean, I'm chilling, you know, I'm chilling and, you know, I'm like, I'll bring like my computer um you know i'll watch like a movie or if i'm watching like a show i'll be watching that uh I'll, me and the me and the artist will be talking um it just depends you know longer mm -hmm. sessions i definitely like to get like a movie or two in because i feel like that helps make it go by faster um so i usually always go with like like a like a movie trilogy or like something like that just so like i can mm -hmm. just go let movies go um so yeah no i definitely try to just keep keep my mind off of uh, getting getting my arm blasted or something like that yeah. so i mean it, it definitely helps though for sure yeah you could have got through like three four harry potters in that in that oh, one easily. session so and that the batman trilogy star wars you know yeah. all them like I'm, i go through all them so i definitely i definitely get my movies in when i'm getting tatted <laughs> And are you are you a guy? Do you show up to to get tattooed? You're you come solo, like you're alone. And is this also is this in the shop, or you have your guy coming to you? So I mean, I, it's actually crazy. You know, all the sessions I've gotten, I've only been in his shop once. Other than that, he really? would come. Yeah, he'd either come to my crib, or I would fly him out to where I was at, and we just do it in mm -hmm. the hotel. And yeah, usually I'd go solo. Um, I've only mm -hmm. only people I've ever really brought have been my brothers. And then my fiance, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only people that really uh, been moving me getting tatted. Um, a lot of it, you know, is like if I'm getting tatted, it's an experience to where you know I like I like to you know just if I'm sitting there for that long, I like to just you know be in my thoughts and sometimes self reflect. You know, just yeah. you have nothing else to do. Um, if you, you can only watch movies and stuff for so long, so I mean, when I'm not doing that, you know, I kind of just like to be in my thoughts and you know remember why I'm getting the tattoo. I mean, mm -hmm. tattoo itself is an experience, but like, I always like to have, you know, mem remembrance of like why I'm getting it. And like, like for, I have stories for everyone of why, you know, I was getting it and, you know, it, hel it help it helps with the process too. I mean, it, it can be painful at times, but for the most part, you know, it definitely helps time go a little bit quicker when, you know, you're just remembering, you know, why you're getting it. For sure. Like thinking of that end result the whole time, then it all pays yeah. off. Yeah, most, most sure. definitely. Have you ever tried to like peer pressure your brothers into getting into getting some tattoos like while they're sitting there with you or anything? Man, we're so damn close that, you know, I got to the point man, where it's like they're either with it or they're not. And yeah. there have been so many times when my older my oldest brother was like, Yeah, I might get one, but at the same time, he was like, No, nah, I'm I'm just not. Cause he he's not he's not necessarily good with needles. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I, I don't think he'll ever get one, but my middle brother, like Jordan, I could see Jordan, my middle brother Jordan getting one, but he's just so like whatever about it, he could care less. Like honestly, yeah. if he was to get if he was to get one, he'd probably get um the H three one that I got on my right arm. Yeah, yeah. Like, but but I was gonna say time, you get, you guys gotta get the three, you gotta get the matching the saying, matching bro. logo. Yeah, yes, I got it. I got it thinking like yo, they're gonna they're gonna do it with me, but um. And then my parents are talking about getting one, but they ain't getting, they ain't, man, they ain't getting tattoos. My parents ain't getting tattoos, nah. But I, only one I got hope in is Jordan. Other, other than that, I don't think no one else in my family can get one. Yeah. Damn. What about, so what about, I see you have a, the hand piece, right? You have the, yep. it's like a yin yang on your hand? Yeah, yep. Okay, so talk to me about one, just that piece in general, and then that spot uh, I want to talk about. Because like you said, with the, okay. with the league culture changing and yeah. hand tats, face tats, neck tats, all that, just talk to me about uh, that spot and that tattoo. So this yin and yang actually um, has a couple meanings. For me, of course, it means, you know, balance. I have to try and, I like having balance, you know, in so many things, you know, so many things in my life between basketball, family, my faith, just, you know, finding the perfect balance to where I can coincide with all three and, um, you know, truly just find that inner peace. And I think that's a big mm -hmm. part of it. But at the same time, you know, I got it for my fiance. Um, me and her have been, you know, she's been my best friend since we were about eight years old. Like we, we went to elementary school and everything together. And 
we're gonna get married in august so i got i got that you know piece for her like she's everything i'm not you know and so Mm -hmm. like you know she she compliments me better than anybody so um yeah it's kind of like you know she's kind of like my my balance you know and she kind of always brings me back down to earth um to always remind me you know what's what's truly important that's really cool. And congratulations too on, on the engagement and appreciate the wedding coming that, up. Bro. Appreciate that, man. So so did you have any any hesitation when you went and got the hand tattoo? Like in terms of, uh, of how you thought people would see you, shit like that? No, not at all. Um, you know, I personally I, I love it. Like I love I mean mm-hmm. the hand is such a tough place just because when you go over it initially, um, it looks great like for like the first day or two, but then like yeah. that hand is so sensitive to where it's going to fade. So it's mine's been faded for a while. I got to get it touched back up. But with mm-hmm. the hand, you always got to run through it twice, you know, kind of just with yeah. the shading and everything and the lining. So, um, but I love it. You know, I really think it like, you know, brings my whole sleeve together and makes it look really cool. And, um, you know, I really like it. You know, it definitely ties, you know, I feel like my whole arm together and a lot of hours sure. I put in. Um together so you know i love it you know and i yeah i don't know i don't know if i'll get my other hand but um you know i definitely this is definitely one i'm happy i got for sure yeah no i think it, like you said i think it ties in like the whole thing and it looks super dope it flows nice yep. Yep. so are you uh like against or are you ever thinking about like touching the neck touching the face with like where we're seeing the the kind of culture go these days i'm gonna be honest with you man I, I I give a lot of respect to people that get tats on their face or their neck or like you yeah, know, yeah. under like that's that's a that's dedication for one two that's painful I feel like only thing I'll get is possibly behind my ear like right yeah. here or whatever like you know things that you've seen other guys have but um I don't think I could ever really get my fa- anything on my face or my like right under my neck I, I don't think I could ever do that no nah. but I mean and that's I, just I, I a- do, yeah, that's just that's just a person. That's a personal like. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could. I don't think I could do it. I, I, I don't think yeah. I, I would like the look of it. And at the same time, like, I don't know if I could sit through sit through a session getting my like my neck or neck my face. Yeah. Nah, I don't yeah. think I could do that. Is there any is there any guys uh, in the league on the team um, that you kind of look at and you're like like some fire ink like guys you give kudos to for having some dope tats? Sure. I mean, Aaron Aaron Gordon for sure has some some crazy ink. Facts yeah um like the piece on his back is crazy like his uh his his leg sleeves are crazy mm-hmm. austin of course i mean I yeah mean, his speaks for itself but around the league you know like jason tatum has some really good pieces mm-hmm. um jordan clarkson of course i mean yep. Yep. but uh a sleeper i would say is my boy rj hampton um facts. I, facts I think he has i think he has the best leg piece in the league and then you know yeah. He's starting to work his way up in the, in his arm and everything, but um, mm-hmm. but no, he's definitely he's definitely been you know putting a lot of work in with it with uh with his ink, which is dope to see. So um, as of right now, that's all I can really think of in terms of the league. But uh, I know there's so many guys that have you know so many great pieces. Oh, Lonzo Ball has some really good pieces too. Like, yeah, for sure, yeah. quality. For sure. Definitely. So what about I got to ask you? What about Bull Bowl's, uh Squidward tattoo. Have you seen that, or have you have you ever talked <laughs> yeah, to him about that? Yeah, I haven't really talked to him much about his tattoos, but I mean, honestly, I think like with Bull's style, I feel like Bull could do whatever he wants. Yeah, like yeah. Bull, Bull is just like Bull's a unicorn. Like Bull's like you know, he he know he's extremely comfortable in himself. Like he know mm-hmm. he knows what like fits right with him, and I think honestly, the the ink that he's got is like you know is really cool in terms of just his style because this style is extremely unique um you know so i I mess with it you know i I really like it you know um he has that he has a kind of the caricature portrait of him and his dad on his leg which is dope Mm -hmm. um you know he has kind of that uh that cross on his arm so i mean his stuff's pretty subtle but at the same time you know i think it goes really hard like i I like i like you know the pieces he has so i mean it's super cool all right this is kind of a question uh to wrap up and that i ask like every guest we've had so far is how much do you think you spent on your tattoos total? I hope my mom's not watching this because she's gonna be <laughs> pissed. But uh, I probably spent, I probably spent about like eight to ten, eight to ten thousand. Okay. okay. You know, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, um, that's a not, moderate not number. Yeah, that's yeah, not. That's I, not, I, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Some people be taxing, and it's a lot worse. But I would say about eight to ten. Yeah, mm-hmm. eight to ten. All right.
bro that's it for us i appreciate you coming on opening up talking about everything that was a super dope combo uh once again good luck tomorrow for the game and then and then just congrats on the wedding everything coming up for you uh hope you i wish you the best appreciate you my man thank you for having me no problem